Dr. Ori Ben Yehuda. I'm the deputy editor of the Journal of the American College of Cardiology. I'm Dr. Bertram Pitt. I'm professor of medicine emeritus at the University of Michigan School of Medicine in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Today we're going to be discussing an important article published in JCC, which has very practical implications to our day-to-day -day care of patients in the coronary care unit. This article addresses the issue of the stability of lipid levels during acute coronary syndromes. Traditionally, it has been thought that lipid levels drop during acute coronary syndromes, and in fact, the guidelines tell us to measure these levels almost immediately upon admission. And if these levels are not obtained within 24 hours, they have been thought to be unreliable. A uh, study addressing these issues has recently been published in JCC, and I'll turn now to our guest, Dr. Bertram Pitt, to describe the study and the main findings. Well, thank you. Uh, the study really was not concerned directly about measuring the lipids. What we were trying to do uh, was to compare a torvastatin, 80 milligrams, to resuvastatin, 20 milligrams, and 40 milligrams in patients with an acute coronary syndrome. As you know, the MIRACLE trial suggested that high-dose statins with the torvastatin uh, was probably effective, and there's more and more data suggesting that uh, statins are useful in acute coronary syndrome. So the primary aim of our study was to uh, compare resuvastatin, the newest statin, to a torvastatin, which uh, was the standard at 80 milligrams. And we uh, took about 800 patients with acute coronary syndrome and varied between uh, unstable angina, uh, non-STMI, and STMI who had been reperfused either by thrombolysis or PTCA. And they were randomized uh, at the time of discharge at about four days post-admission. However, we obtained serial lipids from day one, day two, and day four, and that is the basis of the report uh, that appeared in the JACC. And as you mentioned, uh, I was taught that uh, serum lipid measurements were unreliable uh, early on, and in the old days, we were told even you had to wait about a month. And of course, if you wait a month, you've missed a tremendous opportunity to help the patient with a statin. Uh, Bob Rosenson, who is now one of my colleagues, about uh, 15 years ago, reviewed the literature at that time and found, as had been said in the past, that there was a big drop and recommended that you have to wait for a long time. But those studies uh, were very small, and often they were using indirect measurements for measuring LDL, and the free-to-all formula depended upon triglycerides, people were fasting and not fasting. So uh, at the time, that was correct. But as you look at the more recent literature over the last few years, uh, some of the more recent studies uh, including the MIRACLE trial, have shown there may be some changes, but very slight changes. So we had the opportunity uh, to look uh, in these first few days. We obtained a sample day one. It turned out to be about 26 hours from admission, day two and day four. And we looked at LDL. And we had, as I mentioned, about 800 patients, but in 500 of those patients, we had a direct measurement of LDL, uh, which we felt was more reliable. So we only used the data from that 500 to assess the changes over time. And what we found is there were significant changes. There was a small and significant drop from day one to day two, then a slight increase to day four. But although they were statistically significant, uh, we're talking about a very small percentage and not clinically meaningful. And so our conclusion looking at this is that you should try and obtain a, a fasting sample uh, within the first day, and that's pretty reliable. But even if you miss it and get it on day two, the changes are very small and you should use that level to estimate uh, how much LDL you'd like to reduce, and that, of course, is important in your decision whether you're going to use a high-dose statin or uh, a lower-dose statin. Uh, but in the past, excuse me, a lot of people, because of this prior knowledge, felt it wasn't even worthwhile, even though the guidelines, as you say, uh, we should do it. Many clinicians still weren't doing it because of this old knowledge. And I think 
what we've done here is reinforce the guidelines and say it is worthwhile. Uh, there may be changes, but they're really pretty small. Now, uh, we didn't measure things in the first day, so uh, there may be some changes from zero time to the first day, but certainly we got there at the mean of about 26 hours, then day two, and the changes are very small, and when you look at the paper, you see the exact uh, percentages, uh, and it's just clinically not meaningful. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Pitt. What you're telling us is really of significant practical information for the clinician. We can now have an easier time, so to speak, and if we have missed drawing the fasting lipid level on admission, perhaps the patient has arrived in the evening after eating a heavy meal, we don't have to worry so much about measuring it the day following admission or even on day two, three, or four of a hospitalization for acute coronary syndrome. And the real important thing is to act on this data and place the patients on appropriate treatment while still in the hospital. That's exactly right. Thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Pitt for joining us today and highlighting this article in JCC, and thank you, the audience, for joining us for these interviews. Thank you.